Hello, and welcome to the second part of our commentary series, specifically about the first episode of Dualistic Unity, Scratching the Surface. So this is a commentary on the second half of that episode. If you are looking for the exact point where we left off, it would be at the 28 minute and 28 second mark. So you can continue on there if you're following along at home. Of course, we're going to continue on here. The last episode ended where we were originally talking about collective awareness, that Andrew moving his hand is in fact me moving his hand. If you look at it in a way where there is no ownership over that collective eye, where you recognize it as one singular body or one singular awareness in motion. And so we can continue on there, but I'll pass it over to Andrew first. Yeah, I love that that first episode ended with the with the hand wave like, uh, well, you're not waving my hand <laughs> or you can't wave my right hand. Oddly enough, enough, I just did. That's like oh, one of my favorite. I mean, probably one of my favorite parts of all of our episodes was that because that so succinctly kind of not explains everything, but is just showing the maintenance of perspectives and then the reality of what's what's actually going on and that because in that spot which we'll probably see in a bit here was like i wasn't even remotely close not that there's like close and even now as i'm saying it's like you know, paradox and whatnot and you can too heavily invest anyway i'm fucking gonna just fucking ramble i'm uh i'm fucking pumped for this i'm really enjoying these um so yeah let's let's go yeah now, again, uh, I spent 20 years and, and, and mm -hmm. just, just unpacking this. And, and I know you're saying like, I don't know if I fully get that. Neither do I. Yeah. What I can say is that in my moments of clarity, yeah, it rings through the deeper, the deeper it goes, the more clear I become, the more it, obvious it is that the entirety of reality is just one thing. It's just when you've said it many, many times, it's just, it's difficult to let go of me. Yeah. It's difficult to and let go of the idea of me. I, I, I think I pretty close to fully understand the idea that we're all the same thing. It's, it's interesting. Like when people will ask, well, how can we be the same? Like, is it just that strong of an illusion that I feel like, you know, right now I'm waving Andrew's right hand? And you can't wave my right hand. Oddly enough, right, I just did. Right. <laughs> or the thoughts, the thoughts inside of my head, I can hear them. Right. And I'm hearing them can. as you. But you see, that's the point, right? We get caught up in the idea of you and me being separate. Like suddenly you being able to experience yourself somehow negates the fact that you're also me. Right. You can't experience what Ray's experiencing because Ray's busy experiencing it and you're busy being Andrew. It's really tricky because and here's the paradoxical bit, right? Because we talk And and so I think this uh, I fucking love love this part because like even that as you're talking, like I don't like we went so fucking deep in the first episode, like so quick, but it can be that conceptual sort of expression, like, oh, I think I'm kind of getting that we're all the same thing and it's very much like the connection like you know uh computers being connected but still being the computer as opposed to being the entirety of the situation itself like i am this cell in a body i see that there are other cells that i am connected to but then there's still the recognition or the realization that that you're the body, which again, like, isn't this fucking conceptual thing you put in a box and you're like, this is it. It's like, it runs so deep into everything that we do. So, um, yeah, at this point it was, it was very much like trying to grasp it conceptually. So I could, I could understand, not understand it, but be able to explain it. It's fair. Cause I was at a point where I was grasping, for a way to explain it <laughs> while I was doing so in real time, because I'm trying to describe something that isn't necessarily conceptual. I'm trying trying to describe 
a lack of inner narrative, the experience of just being and recognizing that the observer and the observer is the same. Like I'm talking about something that's hard to grasp even for me, despite all of the time that I, I've put into looking at it. It is difficult to talk about this in any way, shape or form. So in this episode, I thought we did a really good job of kind of dancing around it and trying to get a grasp of what it is we were talking about, because that's all we can ever really do. That's all we're ever really doing. That's why I say I can't, I can't really teach how I see reality to anyone, but I can talk about how I see reality and they can misinterpret it or continue to misinterpret it until finally they recognize that the distortion, the reason for their misinterpretation is their own personal bias. And then once that, that's out of the way, they'll be like, oh shit, he's talking about the same stuff I'm going through. We talk about everything being one, but we're still talking physically, right? We're still talking about the division between you and me, the, the, perspe the perception of distance, right? That, that there's air and oxygen and, 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 and physical land between us. But reality works in a very different way than that. Like as much as that is true, that there is the physical, there is also the completely subjective. And the subjective is that without you here, there is no observed. Without the observer, there is no observed. And this is where reality gets really tricky, right? Because when you think of it in just terms of, of one being, let's just break it down to one being. So the void, which is why, why Genesis is such an interesting story, right? So we have the void, we have nothing, or rather we have the potential for everything. It's just unity. It could be anything, but it's not currently anything. It's just potential, right? In that comes the split. The perceptual split. It's not an actual split. It's just within that potential, there's the potential for the unity to observe itself as separate. Right? So now you have the subjective reality of an objective reality. You have the observer and the observed. And they, they, they create each other. They are the same thing. They're not disconnected. Right? So that is reality in a nutshell. That's your existence. You are not separate from your from your reality. The observer and the observed are one. Your awareness is reality itself. The paradoxical bit is that everything that is in the universe comes from you being the observer of the observed. So I'm within your consciousness. Everybody else is within your consciousness. Everybody else is within your awareness and you're within ours. And that's the paradoxical bit is that we're all within one another's awareness and we experience it as a physical universe. And that's how messed up this is, which is why science is having so much problems trying to explain physical distance, why everything is connected. And, and again, the, the whole multi-universe theory or, or multiple timelines or, or uh, alternate realities, because all of this stuff is real. All of its stuff is possible. We, we can't explain why we can't just jump from one reality to another. And that's, that's, the age old question is like, why, why can't I? And it's like, is it just because I'm so committed to this? Exactly what you asked. Is it just because this seems so real? And that's what you know, your shamans of, of ages past have tried to, to get past. That's why the, um, the indigenous uh, tribes of Australia call this the dream time. They actually look at this as the dream time. There are tribes in Africa, same thing, that we are multidimensional travelers who got trapped in an illusion. These are all old tribal myths way before science. So it, it's not a new conversation, right? But it comes back down to that question of what is possible? Exactly how real is this? And if I continue to question it, does that change the influence that we have over the observed? The more we break down that, that division between the observer and the observed, what does that change? What is possible for us as a species or us as an awareness, which is a better question, question right? This is where magic comes in. This is where all of this interesting, mysterious stuff starts to come into the conversation because uh -huh. you can't, this is where reality becomes more fun because all of a sudden everything is questionable, mm -hmm. right? Even the nature of our own existence, because yeah. I'll admit, I don't know I exist. And, and I mean that completely. I know that there is existence. I know that I am experiencing existence and I experience choice, but I also know that all of my choices are the result of the influences that I've had before now. And that, you know, because of those influences altering my choice, I can't necessarily say that my choice is separate from the will of the whole. And if my choice isn't separate from the will of the whole, then there's no real me, in which case it's just the whole.
and that's me. So it just keeps coming full circle back to your existence. Yeah, that that got through. I I get that. I think. I just wanted to say very quickly, I haven't seen this episode since forever. Um, I, I love it. I, I love the fact that I just went through a bunch of shit that I would, I up until that point had been just waiting to get off my chest, but while doing so knowing most of it wasn't going to land, right? But all I can do is communicate it. And it's funny. I, I haven't necessarily looked back at this episode, but it's a pretty dope episode. <laughs> I want to have like, it's so hard to hold off. And, and I like that we're giving time to like stuff, you know, getting out because there's so much in there, but I love that my response was like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But I do remember, cause right before I said like that one rang through, I remember and I because I got the same sort of feeling right there that, oh, it, it was like the realization as you were talking through it. And it's it's funny that, you know, you said it in however way you said it. And it it did because it it hit me. I remember it hitting me that, oh, if this, you know, very curious about it. But if you take this deep enough, like, yeah, that logically checks out if you are willing to look at. It. Obviously, there's a fuckload of shit in there in that like four minute spiel right there. But if you're just willing to sit with it logically and not, you know, think about yourself for a little bit, like it's very logical. And I've, I've said like growing up, I was always very, very much logical. Like when things started to make sense or not make sense, when I really dug into it, be like, yeah, that makes a lot of, even if it wasn't necessarily what I was hearing around me, it's like, that's a, logical thing that's an illogical thing and again logical fucking just a subjective word but yeah like it totally checks out unless you're utilizing some form of cognitive dissonance and this is why uh, i sent you that uh, article yesterday about this new theory that the universe is in fact existing within a void because this is what i've been saying is that we have the perception of time because all of the potential variations of the relationship between the observer and the observed exist within existence, which is potential, right? But for that potential to be expressed, it would have to be expressed within a void, <laughs> within itself, not even a void, but still within itself, it's being expressed. The variation would, be, would experience it as being experienced within the void but there's nothing really within the void because the void doesn't exist anywhere in space and time so it's just the experience of it the shit still just bakes my noodle it's so much fun so yeah this is this is a great episode and what's funny is, is that again we're talking about this we're going over it in the episode knowing that there's so much more to unpack afterwards and that's why I look forward to our commentary on episode two, where again, you've had a, a psychedelic experience because then all of a sudden the stuff that I'm talking about here takes on an entirely different tone, sinks a little bit deeper. I remember there was a point where you sent me a video. It's like, wow, the stuff Ray says makes so much sense when I'm tripping balls. Yeah, I, I remember making that video that I was, yeah, I think I was, yeah, I was just tripping. I think I was in New York walking around. I was like, oh, it's hitting. And just from, yeah, being a little bit more relaxed, it it starts to ring through. That's something, the idea of whether or not we have free will, I think, helps supplement this explanation pretty well. And the idea that there was never a choice, it seems like. It was like there were infinite possibilities which happened, and here we are. <laughs> here <And> we are. <laughs> and the, the story you mentioned of Genesis and how, you know, infinite possibilities and it unified whole becoming just not separate, but this illusion of separateness and the observer and the observed being the same thing still, 
but it's like I don't know molded maybe into this idea of you know instead of being a unified whole now it looks like a tree and there's you know leaves on one side and leaves on the other and they're all the tree they're all the unified whole it just seems like you know they're different because you know the wind's blowing on one side that one's moving it thinks it's moving but it's it's not it's it's the wind happening which who knows where that comes from somewhere else right. probably and the other one's not moving so it's like hey i'm waving my hand over here why how can i do this and you can't wave my hand over here and it's like that yeah, doesn't take away from the fact that you're still the tree See, I thought that was well done. Admittedly, I thought that that was a fantastic leap of insight. And it was arrived at so very quickly. I had a moment where I'm like, this is awesome. You can tell at this point, I'm very excited about the conversation to the point where I almost won't shut the fuck up. Yeah, you could a uh, perfect spot to pause it because you could see it on your face like, oh, fuck, that actually that actually did ring through. That's actually a, a decent way of and there's still a lot of uh, of questions there. but. Fucking a, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, the idea of so when it comes to free will, because I think I've heard you talk about how, like, we do and we don't mm. from the idea of being a unified whole. There was an infinite, you know, possibilities, and we we it i don't know what the term is created an illusion of separateness or illusion of separateness manifested and here we are you know years and years and years etc here we are i can't and, tell you how much i enjoy the fact that you're experiencing my hell in trying to uh, communicate this with language <laughs> so I, I just i just wanted to say that that uh, this is exactly how i feel and the reason i've been so quiet for so long is, is yeah. because it's not an easy subject yeah right it's, it's really not it is fun I, uh... well, that's it. it it's fun and but it requires courage it, it requires a good deal of courage to even entertain the idea that there aren't other people right mm -hmm. and and you have to you have to be willing to to go beyond you know the conventional idea of sanity right like that i've yeah. often said that awareness lies on the edge of sanity I mean, you have you have to let go of the idea of being sane and insane in order to see what's there because there's no such thing as insanity or, or sanity, right? Like it's just, we're just talking about cherry picking perspectives as what we like and what we don't like. It's like what you were saying about good and bad, right? Our perspective of good and bad always comes back down to what's pleasant or unpleasant for us. And <laughs> that's at the end of the day. And so, because we view ourselves as separate because we view ourselves as, as divided, death is terrifying. And so to us, everything that has to do with death is bad. Yeah. Right. Whereas yeah. there are other cultures that never looked at death in, in that way. They looked at it as something that had to happen. Krishnamurti's journal was actually a good first, a good uh, place to look for that because watching a funeral procession one day in India and there was all the mourning and the sadness. And he was just thinking, like, it's such a shame that that we can't recognize this is the inevitability of so much joy that that this in itself is something to almost celebrate because it's the end of a journey or it's the beginning of another journey. It's, it's the, the completion of a ripple that causes other ripples to happen. Like we, we, we lose that because we focus on what we're attached to. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to get, uh, we're going to get to, to certain places on this podcast, I'm sure, but. Oh yeah. Hopefully. Do you, oh, for <laughs> do sure. you, <laughs> So do you think in that sense of Krishnamurti's explanation there that we almost like over try to over protect to the degree that, you know, everyone thinks death is objectively this horrible thing. I mean, I post that and I get a ton of DMs saying killing. That's like the one response. Yeah. Death is horrible. Death of, of loved ones and whatnot. And so do you think we almost have become this society that's like overvalued yeah. life, like individual well, lives. Control. Or, I would say yeah. we overvalue control. And it's interesting, you know, cause I, I did a video a long time ago uh, when I first started TikTok, just kind of talking about how intention, um, you know, the path, to, it's a, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, the reason we started agriculture 
was because up until that point, we had to live by the will of the land around us. If there wasn't enough food from year to year, our population diminished as a result. And that's what kept us in balance. Um, and then we learned agriculture and suddenly we had that taste of control. And so now we could just farm more food and less people in our tribe would die, which had to be a good thing, right? Like it, it, where nobody's dying, that's a bad thing. So people living has got to be a good thing. But then you look about a thousand years later and that, that tribe that people aren't dying in is suddenly amassed into many tribes that are 10,000 strong and they're running out of land to grow food on. So now they're looking at their neighbor's territory who haven't been farming, who have smaller people who are still in balance and they have to take over that territory. So all of a sudden now, in the name of not dying, we are killing and we're justifying killing because we want their land. This is something, again, Krishna Murray said is that progress is inevitably being fully armed on enemy lines. And eventually you need to expand into other territory because progress never ends. The entire concept of progress is that we're always needing more. We're always doing more. It's like, when is enough enough? Right? So in our pursuit of avoiding death, we perpetuate death. Right. In our in our pursuit of, of avoiding loss, we create more loss and, and there's a balance in that. You know, that's why the indigenous tribes in North America, they always looked at things in terms of centered seven generations. Right. Like if we're going to make a decision, that's. I just want to say how well done, I think, that shift from me wondering about death and overvaluing life to then immediately you expressing how it's it's about control. It's not necessarily about life and death it's about trying to be able to to control things that inevitably leads to situations like with agriculture where we choose something think we're in control have control over this it you know leads to something else it's almost like uh like what's the what's the toy where you push one part of it and another part sticks out and then you push that back in and another part sticks out i don't know there's some something out there but that's kind of what i'm what i'm feeling from this and, and just how often we'll think one thing, think that's the best thing and, and just try to immediately fucking come to an answer and it'll lead to all of these other repercussions. And it's almost like how quickly we try and come to that answer or gain control or certainty, like we saw with something like COVID, like the more repercussions there are versus the longer we're willing to be like, maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Then, and like, you can kind of run with that for, for a while like your whole life because then coming to a certainty then kind of is like closing your eyes it's it's that distraction so anyway just uh two years ago ray fucking well done <laughs> <with that. laughs> it's going to change how our tribe lives whether it's you know we're going to start uh farming oysters or we're going to start you know um cutting down this particular part of the forest which of course is not the point but if we're going to do something, we need to consider how this is going to affect life seven gen generations down the road. And that's why, you know, we look at their progression as a tribe to be a slow progression technologically. But the fact is, is that they didn't end up causing huge amounts of wars. They didn't pollute the crap out of the, the earth. They didn't, you know, create an economy that became more important than their humanity. And it was because they, they lived within the idea that death is going to happen. But because we come from the earth and we return to the earth, we're never really dying, right? And that's why there was all of this respect for their ancestors. There was a respect for the, our, our, their predecessors, the stories of before, right? It was because they saw themselves in this, as an extension of it rather than it happened before now. And if I die now, it's all over. And that's a Christian thing, right? Or rather that's, that's an egotistical thing. It's, I, my old programming is there. I don't like Christianity. I've said that many times, <laughs> right? But I feel like that about, about most monotheistic religions because we focus on death like it's the point. Like a Christian's highest aspiration is often to die because that's when they'll meet yeah. Jesus. And that's terrifying and, and really sad because they're missing the entire point or they're missing the kingdom as it were, waiting for the kingdom that they're going to die and they have to start over again anyway. Yeah. Might as well enjoy it while you're here. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. The idea of it, it's all a lot of what we just talked about is kind of tied together. The idea of, of thinking we have this idea of control and thinking that we know what's best. And we have all these ideas of what's best and the right thing to do and if we just do this things will be good and it's like even when it comes to like you know we're not getting into 
the topic we discussed, we're not going to get into, but something like, you know, curing cancer, for example, you know, objectively good thing, many would say, or curing, say, 10 of the most deadly diseases, all of a sudden, we have a population issue, yeah. kind of like the same thing with the tribes, you know, yeah. discovering agriculture, and all of a sudden, there's not enough land and too many people and they start killing each other. So it's like people get so stuck on this idea of control and knowing, knowing what's best. And even down to the littlest thing of, you know, getting worried about a job interview, thinking, you know, that job is the best thing for you. And it's like, that job could be a horrible way to spend the next two years. And if you do a, you know, you don't get it, then you might, you know, find a job you do like. Yeah. And then it's like, well, then what do I do? It's just like, do your best and don't worry. <laughs> exactly. Just you know, shut up, move forward. That's pretty much yeah. it. That's, uh, yeah. you know, try, try to relax as best you can. I, I, I like how I made that into like, oh, just do your best and don't worry. Like, oh, it's all a good time. And, and like, it does come down to that, but like how deep that runs of the uncertainty, because, you know, at this point, and I think it's, it's, well expressed but it's still very much like in a hypothetical situation that may happen in the future it's not like here you don't know what's best because that's where that kind of goes hand in hand with faith in yourself and not having so much hesitation or concern to just whatever the fuck is something you want to say like you say in it you know as opposed to you know keeping you know maintaining certain things or perspectives or, or ways of being that then get in the way of you just being yourself and expressing yourself in, in whatever way that is. So it's funny how I use that example that, oh yeah, job interview, you know, but it, it comes back to moment to moment. That same insight is like, you do not know what's best. Pick something and pay attention I can find out and do it again. <laughs> yeah. I, what I like is again, you're not wrong. You know, just do, keep moving forward. Try and keep it light. You know, it's like you're not wrong. It's just so funny that we know these things. It's just that as our experience of life deepens, we have to deepen our understanding of what we know in terms of those things, right? Like the more we start to see all the considerations of, of life, the more it is even more true that you need to just keep going and keep things light. So I, I thought that was kind of funny that it's just, it's always the same thing. Like you can keep saying the same words, but when you come back to it, they mean something different because you are in fact different. You know, it's, yeah. it's just like a, a car accident, right? You're going to get injured less the more relaxed you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bracing, <laughs> trying to control how little moves inside of your body. <laughs> but that's it, right? And that's what we do with life. We, we yeah. build a little cage. We're like, I'm prepared now. It's like, no, yeah. you're brittle. <laughs> yeah. You're easy to break. That's, yeah. the pro that's the problem, right? And this is why Jesus' whole thing of the meek shall inherit, inherit the earth, right? The meek are those who just adapt to the change. They don't worry about their preferences and their, and their opinions. It's This is just what is. This is what needs to be done now, regardless of the aching or what I want to happen. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's just living in what is, but yeah, it's interesting. It's, um, we are going to continue to have this problem so long as we don't recognize that we're all one, because that's the thing about our fear of death is it really does stem from our overcommitment to the perception that we're divided, right? Like you asked me if I'm afraid of death and I said, I'm not. And, and to be honest with you, the reason I'm not is because if I died right now, I would continue on as you and everybody else. Right. And that's, that's the whole reason I'm not afraid of death because I'm not Ray. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I experience yeah. Ray, but that's not me. Yeah. So this idea, cause a lot of people at, say, they'll say like, you know, we're spiritual beings experiencing a human. And it's like, that's the same exact thing as just being a human. Essentially. It's just, maybe you have less anxiety about it because you feel like you're not a human, but you're still, an individual divided and it's like well no we're we're pieces of source and it's like to me that seems closer it's closer but 
Yeah, but it's still, you know, the spiritual being having a human experience. It's like, that's just like the same thing, just on a different sort of parallel Big time. path, yep. you know? I, I've said the same. I actually, I got a lot of hate for uh, a comment or a video I made, I think probably a month or two after you started following me, but it was something along the lines that um, spirituality is not the same as awakening, right? Spirituality is just another exercise in ego because it still perceives a division. It still perceives a me and the thing that I believe in or me and the thing that, it, that I, I'm an extension of. And, and again, we all, it always comes back down to this. And I'm saying that all religion or all spiritual conversations, all conversations about awareness are going to revolve around the same very un, uncomfortable insight that it's really just you. And, and you know, we, we try to avoid that. We're like, oh, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. It's like, okay, so what you've done is you've taken out some of the fear in perceiving yourself as a strictly physical being, which is great. And it means if you die, you're not going to die because you're not just your body. That's good. That's lower the amount of stress in your life. That's fantastic. Now let's take it. Let's go an even step further and, and say that we don't even know what human being means. Right? Because I don't at the end of the day, I can describe it. I can describe the physicality of it. Right. But I can't describe the conscious things that I'm, that are available to me. I can't describe what's possible with this body. And we know that we know that the body is capable of doing things that we still don't understand. Like there have been spontaneous healings. There have been all kinds of evidence that there in uh, non-local awareness, like to be able to separate a part of a person's body, move it miles away and then conduct a test on that person and have that person's body respond miles away at the exact same time implies that there is more happening than we are willing to look at, right? Because everything is connected. And so we, we were like, oh, I'm a human being. Like that answers the question. Like that does anything at all. It's all that's done is describe the form, mm-hmm. right? Like all I've done is limited myself to the form. I don't believe I'm a human being. I don't believe I'm anything. I'm just, I'm just here. That, whatever that might mean, I'm just here. A- and any concept I put on that is me just wanting to feel more comfortable. I really appreciate how you dove into, uh, I don't know that I'm human in the first episode. I forget fucking a, I forget how much we covered. Cause this is one of our shortest episodes. Also, this is under an hour that we cover like fucking 10 or 12 different, different topics. And like kind of weaved through it. Like it's a very good, oh, just like a fucking fantastic intro to the podcast and yeah i know levi and jazz yeah scratching the surface like the fact that that's and and the human part is so funny because i was just so fucking curious still am so fucking curious in a in a very similar way because the humanity thing like that hits right now it's so funny how you know we go through ups and down cycles of different things but it's all like trying to hold on to something like Uh, just let me know something but i appreciate you digging into that in episode one (laughs) well i figured why fuck around right like we're having the conversation let let's start it off on on a solid foundation but on the other hand i also knew that this would scare off anybody that wasn't willing to look at it this way like people would be offended by this point they they would already make judgments by this point because there is a mentality that just does not want to feel uncertain and so we questioned a lot in this episode. So anybody who makes it through this episode and continues into the podcast is likely reflecting the kind of courage that we were talking about and that you were in fact embodying. I just want to put in a box. That's all it is. And, mm-hmm. and as soon as I do, I'm in a prison. What, what about the I- idea of awareness? Even that, it's just an yeah. idea, right? The description is never the described. And, and mm-hmm. again, this is the reason I really enjoy talking to you is because that question there is deeply uncomfortable for people. Like you just took all of the certainty that I offered our listeners in providing a nice conceptual ribbon and you just open that package back up and you're like, okay, well, hold on a second. That's not an answer either. And you're right, it's not. Because we are not awareness. Awareness is just a word trying to describe the nature of, our, of what we are or what we perceive ourselves to be. Right. And it's the closest we get. I used to use the word consciousness, right? But that caused all kinds of merry hell for me because as soon as I use the word consciousness, people think human consciousness, 
they think the way we think, right? Whereas awareness is just the basic awareness of being. It doesn't have to involve thought or identity or concepts or anything else, right? Like a plant is aware, like I was saying. So if we can break that down, if we can really look at the most basic elements of, of what awareness is, then we at least start to revolve around the point. But as you so eloquently pointed out, it's not the point, right? The point is still so, what remains underneath. Yeah. So it's almost, it's just like, just what is sort of, and, and I feel like that's maybe the closest because I've been using awareness because I think that's the closest I've come to how it feels sort of just an awareness. There's nothing about it. There's no form thoughts, ideas. And yet, as I say, awareness, it's still just a thought idea word, just like everything else. But I think, you know, I think it's maybe a little bit closer, but I guess the description of just, you know, we are what is. We are what is, and everything else is just, is us trying to describe it or appreciate it or communicate it or, or, you know, come to some kind of an idea of what it is. But this is why our show is so appropriately named because it's dualistic unity. It's the fact that it's all one thing that we experience in duality, that we perceive mm -hmm. in duality. And, and that's the gift. See, that's the thing is that, and this is a common, a common sentiment in spiritual crowd is, you know, this is my last incarnation on this planet. I'm done once I've learned all the lessons this time. And, and I always have the same expression on my face, like, like buckle up your eternity. Like you, you don't get to leave. You just get to experience everything. So it's either you're going to do something with this lifetime or you're not, um, but this is not all there is, right? So you can get caught up in it or, or, or not. And, and oddly enough, it's when we stop getting caught up in the story we tell ourselves that we get the, ch the chance to change it. You know, we can actually make different decisions as soon as we start to let go of what we think our path is because mm -hmm. we're just blinding ourselves. Um, I recently watched a movie, Free Guy. I don't know if you've seen it with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I haven't, not yet. I do. I'm a big Ryan Reynolds fan. My God, the movie's brilliant. It's just brilliant. And I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it's very much this conversation in a symbolic form. It's really about seeing what's, in, what's been in front of us the entire time when we let go of the narrative that we think is real. And that's, that's unity at the end of the day every religion has said the same thing it's just seeing past the division it's just well every religion every spiritual person who has become aware of themselves usually those are the people that religions are formed from so i'm not going to give religion the same credit because religion just works off of other people's hard work i just keep shitting on religion it makes me so happy yeah and and i was in a in a spot where i was not given two shits i mean at that point i think i had been like fully kind of for the most part every component of religion i was like that's that's absurd that's ridiculous and so i was i was all about the uh the shitting out but i like uh because i i can remember now and this might be a little uh preview i think it was in episode two because i think it was after my first mushroom trip like the main insight i came away with was like oh everything just is and like i'm saying it here but it, I remember it hitting so hard because it was all of a sudden all of these ideas of society, myself, like it, myself was starting to get questioned. So it's interesting that back and the forth between, you know, environment versus self questioning and it goes hand in hand. I mean, there is, you know, same thing and it just keeps going through uncertainty like, oh, maybe that whole idea of fucking shit anyway i'm like fucking thinking i'm on an episode now but this yeah i i like that i mentioned that because i'm pretty sure that's the one of the main things i came away from that uh first mushroom trip with was and so it's funny seeing it beforehand <laughs> and once again a moment for me of hearing somebody go so it's just what is just made me incredibly happy i'm like yeah exactly like, it's exactly that simple. That's exactly what it is. Because then the rest is just unraveling that. It's just the reconciling of this different way of looking at life. That's what the integration period is. That's what the challenge is after seeing it, after catching a glimpse of it, 
all of a sudden after that, it's just digging further into it, questioning it even more, you know, and finding more faith in yourself every step of the way. This is fun. But, you know, the people that religions are based upon are usually the people who have went, oh, this isn't anything like we think it is. You know, that's why often those people were just weird. You know, in general, like you had prophets who were walking around naked or, or walking around, you know, dirty half the time. And it's because they didn't care. They were too busy being full of fire at seeing what was in front of them. And our, our culture would put those people in a rubber room. Yeah, seriously. I know. I think about that sometimes. If, you know, if there was ever a second coming of Christ or something, would they ever, no. would they ever notice? <laughs> Given what he was actually saying, it's like, it's almost the opposite of, especially with, in the, in the West, how, you know, westernized Jesus has become, you know, he's like this you white hippie. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, he's this middle Eastern dude. who's like probably did a ton of drugs and figured shit out. It's like, yeah. he's, he's become this good schoolboy who happened to have long hair. Yeah. We're going to ignore the fact that he, you know, kicked over a table and started whipping people in a temple. <laughs> right yeah. by far my favorite jesus story right it's just it's like okay so obviously he still had opinions yeah. obviously he's still and, and you know i haven't made this tiktok post as yet but it'd be a good conversation for our next podcast i'm sure um contrary to what christians would like to say i think jesus screwed up i, I think that jesus screwed up i think that he missed he missed the window i i think that to some degree what he was saying was true. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That I, and we are all the same I, is the only way, truth, and life that there will ever be, that we're all the same thing. But that he kept saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And as a result of being surrounded by egotistical people, they went, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I think that it would be more effective, as we are doing now, to tell everybody else, you are the way, the truth, and the life you are far more important than my perspective of me you know and that was the one thing that really changed for me between my video in 2005 which you mentioned at the beginning of the show and now was that back in 2005 there was still a lot of me there was still a lot of i am awareness i am the universe i am all that's changed is that i'm less and less attached to the idea of i Oddly enough, that's made things a lot easier for me. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I can imagine. There's not not too many fears and worries coming to that realization. Right. Yeah. I mean, funny. what's the worst that can happen? I adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. I think this would be a good place to. See, and it's funny because over the the you know twenty or so years that led up to this conversation. I had come to a point where I could recognize when somebody was cerebrally tired, where basically they had taken in enough where they were almost fucking rubbery. And you could see it on your face at this point. You're just like, wow, I couldn't need another bite. And it was a good place to wrap up, I thought. Yeah, that's some some solid sensitivity right there. Because, yeah, I can. And I again, I can remember vaguely kind of being being there and that the last bit and and just realizing now how much we covered because that's you know it was just a bunch of shit that i was starting to realize oh nothing's what i think it is i'm not what i think i'm not the story that i tell myself and so we come and like we just cover so much in this so uh yeah i mean yeah it was it was cool and and to see that kind of just going through and realizing because i forget in episode one just how much we cover so it's a fantastic buffer for people because yeah we go through a lot and and like from applicable stuff to just the depths of of different things but um yeah yeah and episode one this has been a great conversation and as our oh, listeners good. can tell 
we are going to get about as deep into stuff as we can. We're going to try and avoid the, the really uncomfortable bits because I know that, that we're going to get some backlash for that, but we're going to skirt around them as much as we can. We're going to really deep dive on, on a lot of this stuff because it's not a conversation that you really get to have in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I've run across maybe a half dozen people in the last 20 years that I can talk to about this stuff. And even then it's only to a certain, to a certain limit. So I understand that there are going to be things that we're going to talk about on this show that aren't going to sit well with everybody, but I would ask that they give us a little bit of patience and indulgence because given enough time, we will eventually bridge that gap and make it make sense from both perspectives. So yeah. it, it, it's really just about exploring it and, and, and coming back to the idea that there's nothing wrong with questioning so long as we're not trying to hold on to an answer. Exactly. And I think on that, point um for people listening if you are you know specifically curious about a certain thing feel free you know dm us comment on posts about this questions that you have specifically if there was something that was said it's like oh, i kind of get this but can you spend a little bit more time and you know we'd be happy to discuss further i think there's just there's an infinite amount of things that we're going to get into on here, barely scratching the surface. And I know I'm incredibly excited. Me too, to I'm so excited. And again, the less that we, we think about ourselves, the more our audience is an extension of us and we're all going to have this conversation together. We're having one collective conversation with ourselves. Exactly. Awesome, that's really good. Oh man, I, I love, I forgot that. I love that I'm the one that said, we're just scratching the surface here like i totally forgot because we just covered a fuck load of shit that i still am not even close to fucking wrap my head around or, or i guess the the biggest shift has been just thinking that it is something that i can explain or or get across to someone else as if that is a thing so yeah fucking i hate that that is an awesome Episode. that that was great for sure and what i enjoy about that is basically that was a trip like there was enough questioning there of everything about existence and reality that one would find themselves in a state of uncertainty just through following along through that episode which is why i i say it would scare a lot of people off they would just get uncomfortable and stop listening but for anybody else to go through that episode would be kind of a fun ride because you'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, and fuck those Christians, you know, <laughs> but the, just a little bit of extra gravy in there. The, the point is, is that it's just questioning things and admitting that it's okay to be uncertain, admitting that it's okay to go through everything that you're going through, but that there is a reason you're going through it. And there is a misunderstanding of existence as a whole. There is a perception that is blinding us to the truth that everything is connected, regardless of how obvious that might seem. So I love the fact that we really fucking went to town in this episode in the brief hour that it was because, and I remember thinking, this is a great introduction, not just for Andrew to all of the shit that I'm going to talk about, but for our listener. So it was very much, okay, let's start easy because the first half of the episode leads through a lot of stuff. And then the second half of the episode just deep dives. So that was a lot of fun. And it's funny too, because I had, and it's not to say that you were trying to curate anything, but I think I discounted like, tw like how long 20 years of chewing on this shit is. And then having the opportunity of someone who's like, just openly very curious about all of it not really being like eh, no one and makes quick me... and quick <laughs> right it, and you weren't looking for anything to follow you weren't looking necessarily for the right answer you were looking at something that was a new perspective that required some investigation that's the enthusiasm that you came into the conversation with this is cool and that's the best way to approach this conversation. Because if you're looking at this conversation, like, is this going to lead me to the promised land? Will I become more enlightened? Will I, and it, 
it throws everything off. But from the very start in this episode, you were curious, you were skeptical, right? But you were enthusiastic. And so it was really just about being willing to continue on in the conversation. And that is reflective of your own state of mind at the time. You were willing to question things because you had invested in certain states of mind that weren't working. And then you came to a point where you're like, fuck, I'm not Andrew. And if that's the case, then everything I've ever invested in based on that fiction of Andrew is questionable. So that's it. Everything else is questionable. That's the path. And fucking perpetually questionable <laughs> and it's funny coming full circle because even now like i am very much enjoying listening back to this because there's a lot of stuff because it it rings true no matter where you're at what you're going through what you're dealing with and no matter how much maybe you've you know recognized things or whatever that means like even all of that like in these early episodes as much as there was the I don't think I was really trying to become more of anything. It, it definitely, I think getting into the conversation, it was very much like the conversation was a thing. Like it wasn't necessarily the full circle. Like we were talking earlier in the episode about the physicality of things and recognizing, you know, there's no disconnect. There's, you know, the molecules in the air is no different than what we're made out of. And that was kind of where I was chilling for a bit. And it wasn't quite, letting go of so much of my certainty about things. And that, that allows you to almost build a certainty that can give you the illusion that there's a right way to get things across, like, which allows you to maintain the idea. There's a right thing to say and do moment to moment going into any situation. You know, there, there's some structure that's like the right way to do a fucking commentary series, even like, this stuff is just hitting me now. Like, oh, there's no right way to do this. We can just fucking get baked and laugh and talk about whatever thoughts come up as we're going through that. Like, that's hit two years later, but it's the same, you know, it's just, it's circling the same exact sort of insights of fucking uncertainty. This has been a lot of fun. I'm very much enjoying the trip down memory lane as it were, but I do want to mention, and it's funny because you were saying, I know you're not curating it. No, I, I, to some degree, I really was like, I remember very much a lot of contemplation being involved with season one for me, because I was trying to gloss over everything kind of like, here's what you're getting into. I know you're not going to take all of this in. <laughs> right. And then after the fact, break it down into digestible chunks because you cannot get all of this at one point like because then you're just getting a concept there's nothing to get is the point but it takes forever to understand that because you have to go through all of these concepts to finally realize oh fuck i'm looking at concepts right so yeah this 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 first season especially was how deep can i keep this before i scare him off and how can I scale it so that way it's never just hammering you with deep shit without there being scaffolding underneath? And so, yeah, there was a lot of that in season one. That's why season one to me was, was it felt like I was putting into application everything I had learned up until that point about people, about sensitivity, about where they're coming from, about, you know, the investment in ourselves, the the empathy with yourself, not judging yourself for all that shit. It really did feel like I, all of that was coming up to like, okay, here's your TED talk, go nuts, <laughs> right? And, and so all of a sudden, we had this conversation going. And I, I have to say, I didn't know it would continue. I was, I was thoroughly expecting you to just bolt at some point around the recognition that you were reality itself and eternal and you haven't and you didn't and i know it's not a it's sometimes tempting to do so but you can't run from yourself right so yeah no this has all gone so well in a way that i could not have imagined when we recorded this first episode I am so excited about dualistic unity existing, the community itself, everybody in the comment section, everybody who's listening to this. Hello, listener. It's so nice that you could be here because two years ago when we recorded this episode, 
you weren't. And it's nice to know that it's just out there for people like you to find, specifically for you to find. Well said. Yeah, it's uh, it's so fucking interesting. Ah, fuck, I had another point. Maybe that that's uh, that's good. Oh, uh, just saying how impressive it was because I never felt like there was any curation whatsoever. Like I never felt like, and I could see in a in with someone with a mentality of more control and like getting to the right thing, there would be like you know more of a push for for topics. I never felt like that i don't think it was until over a year in that you mentioned that you had some semblance of an idea of how you wanted to kind of structure not structure but just like yeah there was something extra i never felt like that at all so i think it just goes to show like where that sensitivity was and the willingness to like you know have some contemplation but also not choosing it as this is it because the whole time i just felt like i was digging through stuff i was having insights about every week and i was like oh this oh this oh this and and just kept coming week after week with you know different thoughts because i was especially during the first two months i was doing a fuckload of mushrooms that fall once it hit me that oh these are these are absurd uh that it's illegal uh, yeah. So that definitely informed a lot of, a lot of the insights early and not that they wouldn't have happened, but, um, yeah, things have a way of being seamless, right? For sure. And it's interesting because it wasn't so much curating topics so much as, cause you're all really all we're ever doing is going in one of two directions towards ourselves and responsibility and awareness and uncertainty or away for, from ourselves into the fiction of of us and control and, and our assumptions and all that stuff. So it's always just looking at how quickly we're going towards that relaxation and that uncertainty because it's easy to either get stuck to make an assumption to stick on it and then not want to move. And so you got to question that. But on the other hand, you can question so quickly that you, you risk panicking yourself. So on that level too, it's kind of like, maybe we won't go down that road right there. Like we never got into the Illuminati or, or secret societies or anything like that until it came up in a community topic. Right. And so that's what I mean is that over time, I've just kind of learned like there are applicable parts of this conversation. And then there are parts of the conversation that although cool will actually just throw you right the fuck off. And so that that's what I mean by curated, not planned by any means, but uh, very delicately walked through. There was always an aspect of, of being super sensitive to where the conversation was going because it was so important, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, no, and it was certainly uh certainly felt and appreciated but yeah and then because it's and that's the thing and like I, we can wrap up soon here but with that first episode like we did go quote unquote deep with stuff like you did say stuff that was so even me thinking like you know you kind of curate it it was more just feeling it as we as we went with exactly. the sensitivity. Yeah. It wasn't a preset. It was maintain that sensitivity throughout the episode, throughout the conversation. Cause we cover a bunch of shit in the first episode. And then it's just how, how much pushed into that we get how quick. Cause yeah, but it always just felt like I was, you know, coming to each episode with, Oh, I, this hit me this week you know and uh yeah so and for me it was an exercise in, in application to a very large degree you know there were always points where i was informed by the discussion with you but there were also points where i'm like i don't know what my answer to this is speak you know like the uh part where you're like well i'm ra i'm waving my hand but you're not waving my hand and the response oddly enough you know i just did i had never given that response up until that point that had never come out of my mouth. It was never something that, and I had always wondered, like, how would I respond to that? I didn't know. That was the first time that that response had come out, and it was appropriately for episode one. So, yeah, no, it very much is, as with everything, 
a relationship. It's a dance. You're going back and forth. You're informing one another so long as you're willing to just keep going. Right. The only thing is, is that again, I had been talking to people for so long that I had built a certain degree of sensitivity to when it gets a little bit too much. And when I have too much of a need to get something across, that was the point is that through season one, I was really just letting go of my own need to get anywhere, watching where the conversation went and then just kind of going, all right, let's go this way a bit more. You know, it's like, Oh, hold on. All right. We're going too fast. Won't rain that shit. In. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And it was just, again, over, over sensitivity over time. Right. It's just learning that. And so, yeah, no, it's been a hell of a lot of fun. This has been a fun part two to our commentary series. I'm really looking forward to episode two. Uh, we're going to wrap up here, though. Thank you for joining us, everybody who could do so in the live section. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.